Doing live video. I'm live. Let's see if it comes up on the big computer now. Right. Morning, people. Nice to see you there. Went live at 10.30, but for some reason it wasn't coming through. So to restart the feed. Good morning to you all. Morning, Kirsty, Rosalind, ha uh, Harry, uh, Moira, Maxwell, Matty, Thomas, Lynn, Barbara. Good morning, Nancy. Morning, Susan. Margaret. Hi, Diane. Hi, Ellie. Say hello to Ian for me. Right, good morning, folks. Starting to come through at a good rate of knots. Yeah, we'll get a few more minutes and we'll get the broadcast underway. Um, good morning, Val. How's Brussels? I hope the weather's better than what it is here. Morning, Neil. Debbie. Daniel. Hi, Nori. Right, we're up at the 100 mark. Right, so it's a... As you can see, folks, I'm at home. So it's in the truck Davy, out the truck and in the house and his office and his home in North Lanarkshire, where it's overcast and 13 degrees, quite clammy. So welcome aboard. And uh, we'll get this broadcast up and running. We'll start with the coronavirus update. These are the figures for yesterday. The 16th to the 5th, 2021. Okay. Tested in Scotland since the pandemic reached their shores. 1,964,162,129. Now, it doesn't tell us how many tests were conducted from Saturday to Sunday, but that's becoming a pattern uh, each week. But we know that there's uh, people being tested because um, tested positive since the pandemic reached their shores is two, uh, 279,613. And that was plus 292 new cases. It's on the rise again, folks. In hospital, there are 64 COVID patients, of which three are in intensive care. Vaccinated, there's been 3,020,335 people vaccinated. And that was 16,996 uh, people receiving their first jag from Saturday, Sunday. And of that 3,020,335, 1,621,031 have had both JAGs, an increase of 21,512. Deaths by the hospital count stays at 6, uh, 7,664. There's no change from Saturday to Sunday, thankfully. Community and hospital deaths combined stand at 10,104. We know there's a few to be added to that, but we get that uh, updated to us weekly um, on a Wednesday from National Records of Scotland. Okay. Right, let's get a review of the weekend's news or the stories I've picked to, to talk about. Okay. Friday started in the rags on the events in Glasgow on Thursday and on the Indian variant of covid um, as it is starting to take hold. Okay. Now, the, the carry on with the Home Office uh, sending um, officers or officials into Glasgow on Eid to lift a couple of people who may or may not have broken uh, their asylum seekers' agreement was a bloody outrage. All right. They knew exactly what they were doing. This is what they're calling muscular unionism. They're no chuffed that the people of Scotland has re-elected a pro-independence parliament with a mandate for a second independence referendum and they intend to put us in our place for it. And the best way for the, they thought, well, they thought the best way to do it was to go into the First Minister's constituency and the most holy day in the Muslim calendar and trying to lift a couple of people from their homes. Wow. Nuts. Anyway, the good people of Glasgow weren't having any of that push. Now, Glasgow got a long history of putting Westminster in its place 
for the Red Clyde Siders all the way up. The people of Glasgow brook no nonsense from Westminster. None. And to think that they can go into the heart of the First Minister's community and provoke um, riots on one of the most holy days in that community's calendar. Wow! Talk about a bloody outrage. Anyway, if that's the way they intend to go forward, then we must make ourselves ungovernable. Every time they do something they we don't like, we have to we have to um, uh, stop them. They plan to spend, uh, spend direct into our country, bypassing our parliament. If the councils take the money, we have to put the councils out of business. Their agreement with um, a, the Scottish Parliament through the devolution settlement in Cosla means that they get their funding from the Scottish Parliament, not the Westminster Parliament. If they put a shovel in the ground, then we have to fill the hole back in again the minute they put the shovel down. Make it clear to them that that's not how devolution is supposed to work. If you remember right, folks, I spoke about this, Alistair Jack telling us how devolution works, changing it from di a home rule to um, a direct rule, saying we had two governments. Two governments. And this is their plan to love bomb Scotland, throw money at us. They don't seem to get it into their napper. It's about better governance, no about uh, racking up a bigger deficit because they want to hold on to your resources. Alistair Jack took the piss last week after the election. Hey, love bombing Scotland, telling us that, hey, hey, that, that they at Westminster love our oil, our gas, our whiskey, our electricity, our salmon, our fisheries, our agriculture, everything that generates wealth for them. And Jack's telling us that that's what Westminster loves about us. That's what's called taking the piss. That's what that is. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> and of course, hey, there was a... The, um, the other main story um, in the rags on Friday was, of course, the new Indian variant of a uh, COVID taking a grip here in the UK. And it seems to be in the Asian communities around the UK, uh, Asian communities of London, Nottingham, uh, Bolton, Blackburn and Glasgow. And these people are all interconnected. You know, they're all family. A bit like the rest of us, we're all family, we're spread out all over the place, but we nip back and forward, because the UK is not that big an island, to go and see we're family. You know? So, um, the Indian variant's taking a grip, and uh, let's hope we can quash it, or let's hope that it isn't going to be immune, or mutate to be immune from the virus, uh, the vaccine that we've all just had. Right. Hey, where are we? Ah, anyway, moving on, Friday, um, the election of the um, a, of the new um, leader of the de a Democratic Unionist Party in Northern Ireland happens, right? And the new leader of the DUP will be a Mr. Poots. Now, of course, I don't, Edwin Poots' his name is, I don't really know that much about what's going on in Northern Ireland, so I asked our Northern Ireland correspondent, Fiona Robertson, to give me a, a, a phone and give me a wee bit of background on, the, on Mr. Poots. Now, Mr. Poots is a creationist, right? He believes the earth is only 8,000 years old. He's a religious fundamentalist. He's a crackpot, actually. I mean, who the hell elects a political re leader who's a crackpot and isn't living in the same universe as the rest of us, for Christ's sake? I mean, there's Christians that believe in a, um, evolution. Um, there's very few of them believe in a, um, <laughs> creationism, which is a, quite funny, actually, um, when you get right down to it. But I'm not a, a religious man. Anyway, Mr. Poots, Edwin Poots, doesn't intend to become the first minister of a Ireland. He is just going to be the DUP's new, uh, new leader. So it's up in the air. I had a wee look. I googled it a few times to see who were the front runners in the DUP to take over. And Arlene Foster's hot, uh, hot seat is uh, the First Minister. You've got to remember, um, the term First Minister is a wee bit misleading. And Deputy First Minister is a wee bit misleading in Northern Ireland because it's actually a joint role. It's a shared role. You know? They are of equal rank, if you like. 
the deputy and the first minister in Northern Ireland. It's a strange system, but it keeps the peace. Anyway, there doesn't seem to be um, a, any indication on the internet this morning on who Mr Edwin Poots is going to appoint as a First Minister of Ireland from his MLAs, and that's member, members of uh, the Legislative Assembly, that's what they're called in Northern Ireland. Here they're called MSPs, Member of the Scottish Parliament, earlier they're called MLAs. All right. So there's no indication in who is going to be... Um, taken over as First Minister for Mr Poots. But it's a wee bit of... Um, Geoffrey Donaldson um, said he would uh, take the First Minister's job, but he'd need to quit Westminster and run in next year's election, or they'd need to call an election early. Um, and that was the guy, Geoffrey Donaldson's the guy that ran against Edwin Poots in the competition to be a um, head of the DUP, or the party leader of the DUP. But I can't see Mr Donaldson eh, actually leaving Westminster now that he's been knighted and things like that, you know. So, God knows what crackpot's going to take the hot chair out of there next. But Fiona's promised to keep us in the loop, folks, so we'll get the information first-hand as it comes in. So there you have it. Eh, the new leader of the, the Democratic Unionist Party in Northern Ireland is a Fruit Loop who thinks the Earth is only 6,000 years old. All right. Dinosaurs in museums everywhere, for Christ's sake, and he thinks the Earth's only 6,000 years old. Jesus, mother and God. But anyway, things are going to be a wee bit, na uh, bit narkier there in the province, eh? Fiona was telling me. I see her just pop up in the comments. Hi, Fiona. Uh, Snarling's in the post to the end of June. Aye, I get that, eh, eh, Fiona, day. But as I say, Fiona will keep us up to date on what's actually happening out there, because... There is nothing. There's a there's a blackout in uh, um, the media, the mainstream media here in the UK. It's almost as if Northern Ireland doesn't bloody well exist or isn't a part of the UK, which is a fair statement because it has been annexed by the EU the same way that Kent's been annexed by the EU. <laughs> take back control, was it? What was that they said doing that road? Let's take back control. Kent's been annexed. It's been turned into a customs zone. Northern Ireland's been annexed, ha! You couldn't make this piss up, it's brilliant! Ha! Take back control. Scotland will soon be Joe the Toff and all, and if Drakeford doesn't get his wide down there in Wales, he's talking about taking the Welsh out of the Burning Bridge to Independence Day. Ha! Somebody wants to give you poo buggers in, in England, I see. You know, because the last poll I seen in England had, had the English people eh, polling at 50 50 to ditch the Union and all. <laughs> But nobody's getting the poor buggers in England, I see. Nobody. Bloody brilliant. Right, where were we? Uh, we were just talking about the, the nut job uh, who's just taking her as party leader in Northern Ireland, all right? Eh. Oh, aye. Friday, the first minister decides Glasgow and Maury to stay in level three. You know, um, because of the, 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 the rising level of COVID in these areas, it's best to clamp down in these areas and protect the rest of the, the country. I'm sure the people in these areas understand that. But what's really interesting about it is the usual, you know, the um, leisure industries can off its chump. It was looking to open up the day, but now it's been told it might be a couple of weeks yet, chaps, you know, or chap S's, whoever owns a business. But anyway... <laughs> Um, they're all gone mental. But as Davies, has, as Davies said over and over again, tough, suck it up, buttercups. Human life's more important than you pouring a pint. And we can all wait for a swally. So we can. So that was the subjects I chose for Friday, folks. I hope you found them interesting and informative. All right. So let's see. Let's move on to Saturday. Uh, Saturday's normally an opinion day. You know, you got all the opinion pieces in the rags and Sunday's reflection day, you know. So, Saturday saw Pretty Patel on the press. Um, she stands accused of breaking the ministerial code again. Right? No, that don't make any bloody difference. <laughs> Standards in public life in that parliament down there are a, what we call, sewer level. You know, they're lower than a snake's belly. You know? <coughs> so Pretty Patel 
is being a, um, accused of breaking the ministerial code. Who the hell cares doing that, Rod? Standards in public life made the... I mean, look at the stooshy there was up here when the first minister was accused of breaking the ministerial code. Resign, 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 they all shouted. Jesus Christ, she couldn't make it up. Pretty Patel's on strike three. She's still in her bloody job. And she was already booted out of her job once for breaking the ministerial code because she's a bloody Mossad agent. Wow. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. She was having meetings with the Israelis behind Theresa May's back. Woof. Get that. Brilliant. So, under her new gaffer, she's on strike number three. On breaking the ministerial code, you couldn't make it up. You know, anyway, apparently uh, Miss Patel was a uh, lobbying. I uh, get this, aye, in office and lobbying. Brilliant stuff. Talk about sleaze and corruption. Anyway, she was lobbying the health minister, Matt Hancock, to get a £20 million PPE contract um, a to... What's the name of the company there? Uh, um... Healthcare company, Pharmaceutical Direct Limited. You couldn't make it up, man. Brilliant. She's the uh, Home Secretary's uh, lobbying the, the health minister on behalf of a pharmaceutical, a, uh, does it ever call it again? Pharmaceutical Direct Limited. A uh, brilliant Home Secretary lobbies, like uh, lobbies a uh, um, health secretary. You couldn't make it up. This stuff is brilliant. Uh, if it wasn't so bloody serious, it would be funny. Why are there any of these crooks in jail? You know what I mean? Anyway, eh, Matt Hancock turned them down for that contract, but then awarded them 108 million quid's worth of contracts a wee bit later on. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Maybe there's corruption and thieving for the public purse like the Tories. Uh, uh, take back control, the English people thought. Ah, you bams. You were sucker punched by a bunch of thieves and carpet baggers. <laughs> Bloody hilarious! <laughs> anyway, the Home Secretary's uh, Labour a petition and get this, Labour a petition in the Cabinet Secretary Michael Gove to investigate Pretty Patel. You couldn't make us push up! <laughs> Labour are petitioning the, the Cabinet Secretary. <laughs> Michael Gove. Ah, Michael's as bent as a nine bob note. <laughs> oh, it's bloody hilarious. Ah, oh, Christ, I've got to have a heart attack. Sarah <laughs> <coughs> uh, says I've not yet have a heart attack. I've got to take her shopping. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. You can't oh, Honestly, folks, what do you say to that? Labour is petitioning the crook Gove, who's in the cabinet, to investigate the cabinet. You couldn't make this piss up. Wow. Oh, 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 it's painful. Hey, I've spent the whole weekend laughing about it. You couldn't make it up. You really couldn't. Anyway, so Patel's in the poo poo. Because um, <laughs> she's been lobbying while in office. <laughs> Oh, Christ. Hey, and hey, <coughs> apparently all she did was forward, forward an email. Aye, right. Uh -huh. Yeah, doesn't matter, there's only one email that was still bloody lobbying on behalf of the pharmaceutical company. <laughs> hey, let's move on. Uh, Saturday, Saturday was an interesting day and all here in Scotland in politics because the Alipa party have decided they're going to stay together and actually do the groundwork to become a proper political party and I, I have to say I applaud them for that. They're going to go through the hard work that every other political party has to go through. First, they're going to run, they're going to run the council elections and that's a good bloody start because that's where all political parties start to get their grip. They start to get known. They date at local level. So well done, Alipa Party. Shaking up Scottish politics, it'll be a wee bit interesting. 
I mean, it was a big ask for you to try and win any seats at the election when you only you'd only started a, uh, up six weeks earlier, or went public six weeks earlier. It was a big ask for Alapa to do anything. But uh, I'm glad they've decided to stay together. I'm glad they've decided they're going to um, actually try and grow themselves into a proper political party instead of a snatch and grab mob. You know, so I I'm looking forward to. Um, seeing what they put forward in their manifestos for the different council areas and hopefully they will be wise enough to go and ask local people to stone. You know, um, we don't want them parachuting in all the duff, duffers that have just been lo uh, that have just uh, lost in, in, the, in the election. Let's have them get in amongst the people and become a party of the people, because that's how you become recognised as a political party. You do the hard work. You don't just catapult yourself in six weeks out for the election and hope that celebrities going to win it for you. That's mental. Especially here in Scotland, because Mr Salmon's the one that woke us all up. For Christ's sake, we all read manifestos these days. Prior to the 2014 election, you'd be lucky if anybody could spell manifesto, for Christ's sake. It's only anoraks like me that read that stuff. So, Alep is to be applauded at that. They're going to actually do their legwork and try and be a proper political party. And that's to be applauded, all right. Hey, where are we? Um, over the Pride Patel scandal, with the Alep thing. Hey. Saturday, Northern Ireland's back in the headlines. A, a judicial review is underway on the legalities of the NI of the Northern Ireland Protocols. The judicial review has been a, um, launched in the names of a unionists across Northern Ireland and the UK. Um, the action was launched in the names of a previous First Minister, Arlene Foster, UUP leader Stephen Aitken, TUV leader Jim A. Alistair, and a, one of the architects of the Good Friday Agreement, David Trimble. Lord Trimble. We all know who that muppet is, well, the older ones amongst us will, right? Anyway, this should be an interesting case because, uh, you know, what they are saying is that uh, the NI protocols actually break the Good Friday Agreement. And Mr Trimble, who was one of the architects of the Good Friday Agreement, might actually have an insight into that, but I mean, we'll, oh, I'm sure Fiona will keep us up to date in this one because this is going to be interesting to us all. This could see the um, a, the EU trade agreement fall flat on its by hooky. The whole body of lot could be deemed to be illegal. We could end up back in the customs union writing off. And that would solve a hell of a lot of problems here, folks. To get back into the customs union would solve all the problems. But the problem is the people in England don't want free movement of people. So they're getting 3,000 Indians a year as opposed to 3,000 male Europeans. Do <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, as soon as you get to politics right now, there is no bloody line or, uh, or reason. There's no uh, rhyme or reason coming out of that place down there, that house of thieves and carpetbaggers. Absolutely nothing. At least when we look at Hollywood, we can see political policies and strategies in place. That lot down there are bloody well winging it. You know, there was no thought given to Northern Ireland when the Brexit eh, vote was coming up. Not a bloody, not a bloody peep, nobody thought about it. <coughs> the people in England certainly didn't think about it. See that, the people in England don't tend to think very far at all. They don't really think about Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland and neither does that bloody parliament down there. That's how the whole bloody situation came about. Anyway, Arlene Foster and Mr Timbo are going to take the UK to court to have the NI protocols uh, deemed illegal. We'll see what happens when it hits the Supreme Court after it's been in the Irish courts. That should be fun. So that's one to keep an eye on, folks, and I'm sure Fiona... Um, he will keep us up to date on what's going on on that one as well. Right. Um, 
Right, let's move on. That's the, that's the subject for Saturday, by the way. I hope you found them entertaining and, uh, entertaining and informing. Right, let's move on to Sunday. Uh, now, Sunday's a day of reflection. Um, and it's reflecting on a day of shame in Glasgow on Saturday. That's what's making the headlines right across Scotland. Some football fans had taken it upon themselves after the good things that were done on Thursday and the humane things that were done on Thursday, the same city goes and sets its bloody self on fire on Saturday. It spread all the rags on Sunday. It's the big story of Sunday. Eh, Scotland's shame raises its ugly head again. Football fans wreck the city. Here's me saying we're too sensible to say it. We're in house and fire. And we've got knuckle-draggers running about the city of Glasgow setting a place in fire. Rioting. The place was a dump. Beating each other up. They weren't even beating anybody else up. They were beating each other up. Jesus Christ almighty. You know, football fans need to get a grip. This particular club's football fans has uh, been in the thick of it this year, haven't they? Uh, that's the second time the bloody well rioted in Glasgow. The day they secured the league and now the day they get the league title. Human life's more important than football, you bottoms. Endangering, they're endangering people in their communities because they're gone for Glasgow where they've congregated and where there's a bloody outbreak, Glasgow City where there's an outbreak of COVID, the Indian variant, and then they're travelling back to their communities after they've got picked and wrecked the city centre. Wow. Bloody reckless in the extreme. We need to keep our eye on the infection rate. Thank Christ all the vulnerable have been vaccinated. You know, irresponsible, not on. And yet the next item I want to talk about um, took place on Sunday itself. And that was um, a peaceful protest in George Square in support of the Palestinian people. <laughs> um, because hey, I don't cover much international politics, although like I de or international news, although I do keep an eye on it. Um, the people of Palestine basically are living in a bloody um, concentration camp. Israel controls its water, its electricity, its pharmaceuticals, its food, the whole bloody lot. The people are stuck in a cage, which used to be their country. And they are being massacred. There's a genocide being carried out, and the world's sitting back and saying, bugger all, and that's starting to annoy me. But Glasgow, Glasgow's a city of a protest. When Maggie Thatcher was given her blessing to apartheid in a... In South Africa, we were giving Mandela freedom in a bloody city. We even changed uh, the Stock Exchange place into Mandela Square. Yeah. So Glasgow's the right place for that sort of pressure on the, on the international community to start, because we've got a history of it. What's going on in Palestine is bloody genocide and it's outrageous and it's time the rest of the world sat up and took a bloody look. These people are being wiped too. When's the world going to wake up? Is it when there is none of them left and they're just a footnote in the history books? A shame on us all for no doing something about it. Meanwhile, Westminster and Washington are piling money into Jerusalem. They're calling it a conflict. There's no bloody conflict. Palestine's no army, no navy, no air force. None of that. It's bloody genocide. That's what it is. And we have to pressurise our politicians to do something about it. So we do. Either that, the Palestinian people will become a footnote in the history books. And that will be to our shame. 
או רואה שימס. As you can see, I'm always bit passionate about that one. Right? Genocide's not on. We've got a UK government that's come out and a genocide here and these islands are getting away with it and all. 220,000 people did because of the austerity. And we're doing nothing about it and we live here. Well, the Scots are trying. We don't vote for the bombs. Ah. Uh. But that's a genocide that needs stopped, or the Palestinian people will be a footnote in history. Right, let's move on and see what else we have for Sunday. That'll be a bit shouty today, ain't it? Hey. I right, see, after, after the shame of Saturday's football riots, we had the best of Glasgow come to the fore again on Sunday. Hey, where are we? Aye, we've done that. We've covered the world's shame. Eh? Football fans are Scotland's shame. The plight of the people of Palestine is the world's shame. Right, eh? Um, Sunday, Mayor Tory Slees, English Health Minister Matt Hancock appears on Ma uh, <laughs> to defend, eh? <laughs> Ah, uh, Patel on Saturday, eh, lobbying the health minister. Eh, we've got the health minister lobbying himself on Sunday. You couldn't make it up. Ah, <laughs> <coughs> oh, Jesus. Anyway, the time was revealed that Hancock hey, had helped uh, Brooks New York um, get a £180 million hey, pound worth of con hey, 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 <laughs> contracts for PPE. Ah, uh, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Anyway, um, you know, a, a Brooks New York um, is run by um, a Mr. Uh, Mr. New York and a, a previous top level, uh, level civil servant um, who went into business with Zoe Lai, um, who provides, get this, pet food! <laughs> 180 million quid's worth of PPE contracts to act as the, act as the middleman buying PPE when what they actually make is pet food. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah. Jesus Christ, folks, if you don't want away from that mob down that road, you must be nuts. Absolutely nuts. You've never seen such blatant, obvious, and in front of everybody's eyes, corruption going on. So, the health minister's keen as pals, dodgy backhander contracts and all. Eh? The, whole, the home secretaries eh? lobbying the health minister to give backhanders to our pals. Yeah? And Michael Gove sat there, and he's the judge and jury and whether they've done it wrong. <laughs> Oh, and they've done corruption like the Tories. They're brilliant. That's, that's not a government in there. That's a criminal cabal. <clears throat> they make the mafia look like rank bloody amateurs. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, you can do it. Anyway, <laughs> Hancock's one Mars defending himself. Apparently he was just shuffling emails and all. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You couldn't make it up. You could. Okay. <laughs> All right, we better move on. That's the subjects I wanted to review in the weekend's news. Let's move on to what the... <laughs> hey, what, let's move on to see what the papers say. Oh, this has been a good one today. <laughs> it's been such a weekend. Sleaze, sleaze, and mere sleaze and corruption. It's brilliant. <laughs> Unbelievable. And the Labour Party <laughs> petitioned in the Cabinet Secretary to investigate Pretty Patel. <laughs> hey, Govey, hey, has Patel done anything wrong? No, bugger off, you lot Labour Party. We've got an 81 seat majority, so it doesn't matter what the hell you've got to say. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Right, let's move on to this morning and what the papers have to say, all right? The Scotsman goes on. Um, Sturgeon, rioting Rangers fans, a uh, selfish beyond belief. There's a theme in the papers. Obviously, when I was reporting on it there, I wasn't naming the team. 
because I don't uh, see I don't do this with the bootery stuff. You know, if you mention Rangers in Scotland, you've got to mention Celtic, and I don't do with the bootery. They were just football fans, irresponsible, thuggish people on the rampage. Simple as that. There could have been any football club as far as I'm concerned. So that's why in my report I didn't mention it. But the, the newspapers in Scotland don't have miss them. They don't miss them at all. The newspapers in Scotland have a right go. You know. Um, the record goes on, selfish beyond belief. Same story. The sun goes on. Next Rangers, a uh, um, uh, next Rangers, a uh, rampage. I think it says. Aye. Uh, uh, anyway, she's no. As you can get, the first minister's no best chuffed. But saying that, there's. I mean, I know hundreds of Rangers supporters. Everyone a good person, and none of them would have been involved in that bloody carry on. And Glasgow. Some of my best friends are Rangers supporters. They wouldn't they dream of putting their communities at risk like that. They wouldn't they dream of damaging our city like that. Yeah. If the pubs were open, they'd have probably hoisted a pint. If not, they'd have sat in their house and opened a can of beer and celebrated Rangers winning the league and getting the title presented to them. Yeah. So see, I wouldn't have done the naming of the fans. I just said football fans, because it could be any. Right. We were all no chuffed with what went on. In fact, most, most decent Rangers fans are no chuffed with what went on. Right, the Express goes on. Um, thuggish, sectarian, and self and so selfish. Same story. You know, running about the city, um, uh, singing the religious hate songs. Wow. What? Are we living in the dark ages or what? Scotland's a secular country. Your religion is of little, little uh, importance to any of us, as long as you're a good person. Who cares if you're a Catholic, a Protestant, a Muslim, a Sikh, or whatever it is out there, a Jew? Who cares? And you've got these idiots running about in a, in a, a secular country with Scotland with religious hate songs. Come on. Ah, this is, you know, this is 2021. We're all grown-ups here. I've got friends of all faiths. And you know what? I've never asked any of my friends what their faiths were. Ever. Never stuck, I never ever stroke my mind, I crossed my mind. I would never walk up to you in a pub and say, by the way, you're a Tim or a Prodi or you're a, uh, a Muslim or a Sikh or whatever. You just wouldn't do it. It's irrelevant, as long as you're a nice person. Your faith is a personal thing. Unbelievable. Sectarianism. Really? In this day and age, is somebody having a laugh? Wow. Anyway, where were we? Um, uh, the metro goes on. Thanks a million. Uh, uh, and the... Uh, um, uh, this is a story of the Rangers fans again, and it, it's got to do with the amount of photographs that have been taken, millions of them, and the chance to identify more people by Police Scotland and have them charged for their behaviour in Glasgow. All right. And the eye goes on. New freedoms come with a health warning, and so the day, folks. The day's the day you can go out and hug your granny, see your grandkids, you know, maybe even go to the pub. Because the pubs will be allowed to sell liquor indoors. But it comes with a health warning on it, folks. Be careful. Right? We've seen what's going on in Moray. We know what's going on in Glasgow. This thing can take hold again quite quick. And although we're up to our 3 million people vaccinated, that still leaves 2.4 million people needing to be vaccinated. That means we have a responsibility to the 2.4 million people to keep them safe. We, as a people, as a community, we have a responsibility to our fellow man. So, yep, things are opening up the day. We'll open there, things are opening up the day. Take it easy, folks. Be careful. All right? Right, where were we? Uh, the mail goes on. Scotland back in business. Easing of lockdown. There you go. That's what we're talking about there. Um, 
Now, be sensible, right? The telegraph goes on. Play your part to a beat variant PM urges. So Bojo's asking the people I'm going to behave themselves and be careful as well now that things have opened up even more doing there as well. The Times goes on. Holiday plans uh, thrown into chaos and this has to do with the green light system. Um, countries that are on that just are they, um, you know, they're having their own problems with COVID and of course the Indian variants here in the UK so they don't want to accept traffic from the UK because that would import the Indian variant into whatever country the flight was going to, if somebody had had it. You know, so, you know, it's, just stay at home. Spend the money in your own country. If you're in England, stay in England. If you're in Scotland, stay in Scotland. Spend the money in your own country and get your own economies up and gone again. You know. Right, eh. Where are we? The National goes on, Sturgeon, eh. Um, voices utter disgust uh, at fans rampaging, right? And Home Office uh, killers refuse to take First Minister's calls. Well, you know, uh, that is the case, you know, the, we spoke about this on Thursday, um, Humza Yusuf took to the TV stations here to make it clear that uh, the Home Office were brushing them off and when they did get the Home Office, the Home Office just told them straight, it's a reserve matter shut up, jolt, and get back in your box, you know. And uh, as for the football fans, you know, football fans are going to do what football fans do, you know. They were young, they were stupid. Right, eh, where are we? Um, the Herald goes on. Eh, um, hockey, one billion, a. Eh, Vision for 11,000 affordable homes, and that's a um, tycoon, business tycoon, plans on spending a billion to um, a build 11,000 affordable homes. Yeah. So, let's hope he gets the go-ahead if they're affordable homes. Let's hope something will end up in the social rented sector. <coughs> and the star goes on. Vile. That's it for the star. Vile. And that's how the star, believe it or not, celebrity magazine that is the star, that's how it uh, um, describes the behaviour of certain football fans in Glasgow at the weekend. Right? Um, you know, so, I hate to say this, but, you know, for some reason that particular club seems to have a history of this. You know, we've seen them rampage across the continent and we've seen them uh, riot in Manchester a few years back. You know? I don't know what it is. It's, I don't know what it is. You know, maybe they ought to have a look at themselves. Right? But as I say, I have many, many friends who are football fans and who are Rangers fans and they would never condone that sort of behaviour at all. So I'm not going to uh, get down on uh, Rangers fans because... Um, decent Rangers fans don't behave like that and more importantly it could have been any club you know football f is football and young men follow football and sometimes they get pushed and act up you know it's no excusable but that's what they do they get pushed and act up so folks that's what I had for you I really hope you enjoyed it um, I hope you found it uh, entertaining and informative alright uh, but time to wind this up because he said he want, want me to take a shopping today. Well, you don't know. Oh. Oh. Uh, I guess the shopping trip's off. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to wind this up anyway. Okay, right, remember, support the independent media, support a broadcast in Scotland. Um, so, a, um, yesterday's show was brilliant, a, um, the full breakfast, absolutely fantastic show. I mean, Anwar was on, brilliant. A, support broadcast in Scotland, support Independence Live, Support Indie Live Radio, support a uh, Caledon Media, support a uh, iScot Magazine, support the National Newspaper, support Independence Vloggers and Bloggers. And as I've said before, uh, if they've got a, a crowdfunder or a wee donate button going because that's how they make their living, if you've got a few shekels, throw them in the port because we need these independent voices out there, they inform as well. Okay. The facts, folks, we've seen what happened in Glasgow at the weekend there. All right, with the Rangers fans, but not just the Rangers fans. 
Thursday we had a, um, a gathering to protect two people being snatched from a Glasgow constituency by the Home Office. That was a large gathering, that was a health risk. Saturday we had the nut jobs um, rampaging through the city, wrecking the bloody place. Football fans. And on Sunday, of course, there was a peaceful protest and um, support of the Palestinian peace people. All, all large gatherings, folks. You know, you can say, ah, we were socially distanced. You don't get socially distanced when you go into public transport. You're in a tin box, you know. But the two protests, the one that stopped the Home Office from snatching two citizens from Glasgow, and a, the one in support of the people of Palestine, you know, you can understand them. The behaviour of the football fans, um, I don't I don't understand it myself. You know, the club asked them no to do it. Police Scotland asked them no to do it. The Justice Secretary asked them no to do it. They went against the, the advice of the club, the police, the, um, and uh, the Justice minister, uh, minister. So, you know, there's no hope we can say about that. You know, I mean, their very end club told them, don't come near. But that's just the way it goes. Okay. Right, now only facts. The face coverings and enclosed public spaces. Avoid large gatherings. Clean your hands and your surfaces regularly. Two metres social distancing when you're out and about. And if you need a test, you get book one. They're very easy to get now. Even if you don't need a test, just go and get one. They're getting everybody them now. Okay. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's show. We bit ranty. Um, but hey, Hey, keep an eye on Westminster folk. Their corruption is brilliant. It's also comical. You know, it's the best, it's the best sitcom I've had in years. <laughs> Westminster's not been that good since he... It's not, it's not been that corrupt since Maggie was in the hall. See you all later. <laughs>